Hello and welcome everybody to today's lecture about understanding the electric grid, the requirements, structure and grid stability. So your benefit of this course is that you get basic understanding of the principle of the electrical grid, understanding of the tasks and how they are assigned to the individual devices and also I will give you explanations of typical solutions as state of the art. These explanations are based on fundamental and this is not an engineering course. But when it goes to detailed plant engineering, please refer to specialists. So, to understand the electric power system, there are two focus lines. Focus line number one is energy as a global quantity and focus line number two is power as a local quantity. And for the sake of completeness, I give you the full content of my course. But today, we want to talk about personal safety in the low voltage network. So now let's get started. First, let me demonstrate you two exemplary, potentially dangerous situations. For example, take this lamp and this toaster and imagine while you're handing it or touching it, in case of the toaster, there is through whatever accident a weak wire where the insulation has gone and it touches the outer case of this metal case of this device. And this means if you touch it and hold it, you are in direct contact to the life wire. So you directly have 230 volts or something like this in your hand. And this may be dangerous or even deadly. So this must be prevented. And look here at these three little round circles. They are the protective earth wire, which saves our life. And now I will explain you how this works. Since life is such a sensitive matter, I want to give a full disclaimer. So I will not talk in this lecture about the protection against thermal effects. For example, that a high temperature wire starts to ignite a fire, nor will I talk about the damage due to excessive temperatures or electromechanical stress like vibration due to these fault currents. And also I will not go into details for voltage disturbances, for example, through over voltage lightnings or the consequence of under voltage or the electromagnetic emissions and also not about the negative consequences of power supply interruption. There is the basic protection, which just means prevent direct contact at all. For example, by insulation distances, as is done in overhead lines, you cannot touch an overhead line just like that. And the second one, which is the focus of what comes now, is fault protection, which is the protection in the case of indirect contact with the metal enclosures. We can limit the current and we can limit the duration of such a current. And to guarantee this fault protection in sense of protecting against indirect contact with metal enclosures, we have five low voltage systems. Low voltage system number one is the TT system. Then we have three very similar protective systems like TNC, TNS and TNCS. And the fifth one is the IT system, which in the sense of a kick fallback, I speak to football addicts, ensures that this system is safe. Now you may be surprised to see how it works. So let's start with the TT system. The TT system is the oldest way how to protect people against electric shock. So you see to my right side the TT system. We start from the source to the left, go through the distribution network consisting of cables, overhead lines, and come to the installation. Installation in this sense here means the place where we live, where we work, where we handle apparatus that is energized, like a toaster, like a motor, and which can be dangerous. So now let's see, we energize, for example, the toaster. You have seen the yellow light goes on, the toaster is on. And what happens? There is a fault inside. So the hot wire, the life wire touches for whatever reason, but that never can be prevented. For whatever reason, it touches the metal casing and then a fault currents start to flow. So the electricity comes out of the hot phase wire, L3, goes through the fault point onto the casing. By the way, if you touch it, you directly touch 230 low voltage volts. And from there it flows back through the protective earth wire into ground. And since currents always must flow on closed circles, comes back 
through ground, through the physical ground to the source and here it re-enters the system and we have a closed fault loop, closed fault loop. And since the current is high enough, it will trip this protective device and since the circuit is now interrupted, it is safe. So, you know these protective devices in case of single phase circuits, sometimes they are fuses or miniature circuit breakers and in the case of three phase circuits, you usually have miniature circuit breakers like to be seen here on my right hand side. I think everybody knows these. Now, there is one weak point in this concept. It is the return path through ground, through physical ground. Imagine that you live in a country where we have dry soil. This dry soil is a bad conductor and this may be so high in terms of resistance that it depresses the current and the current is too low to trip the fuse or to trip the miniature circuit breaker and then we have a problem. That means our faulty device is still energized but it is not tripped out. You will be curious what can be done and this brings us to the next chapter. So, we are still in a dangerous position and now the TNC system relieves this problem. The TNC system is basically the same as before but now you see, now to the bottom right side of my slide you can see the casing is directly connected through this protective earth wire with the colors green and yellow it is connected to the neutral wire in color blue. And this neutral wire is grounded at the source, but in many cases also on the way from the source to my installation. So what happens now in case of fault? We again switch on, we again have a fault. The fault current starts to flow, but now it must not go through ground, but it goes directly on type of a current highway back to the source. It is strong enough to trip the fuse and then the faulty device in a safe state again. The same, by the way, happens if we have a three-phase load, for example, like a moat, for example. Another way to provide an escape path in terms of a current highway, a very good conductive connection to the source, is the TNS system, where, you can see to my right side, we have a wire going through from the faulty device back to the source, all the way through in one direct connection and this is the protective earth wire. This system is more elaborate. You have a wire that goes through all the system. It's a five wire system by the way, but it has the same effect. So let's start again. We switch on the device. It has a fault. The fault current comes from the face, goes through the fault point onto the metal casing, which is now in a dangerous situation and comes directly back to the source in a very low impedant way and it is high enough to trip the circuit breaker or the fuse and we are in a safe state. The same, of course, applies to a three-phase load, for example, a motor. Again here, this fault path is so strong that we have an immediate trip. So, in the combination of these two is the TNCS system. You see it already from the letters and the TNCS system is a combination. So, locally in the installation, it's a TNS with a separate protective earth wire and this earth wire is connected at the entrance of the installation, for example, at the central distribution point of this installation to the neutral wire. So now again, we energize the device. We have a fault and the fault current goes on a low impedance and low resistance way back. It's high enough to trip the circuit breaker. It is safe. And again, we can do this in a three phase load system. Now there is one a little bit surprising solution to prevent people touching live wires and getting energized by the voltage that is in the system. It is like, I speak to the football players amongst you, like a kick fallback. It's the so-called IT system. And when you look at the IT system, you can see at the source that it is the no connection anymore between the source neutral and ground. Now, what happens if we have an insulation fault? Again, the same procedure comes. We switch on the device, we have a fault, and now let's see how about the fault current. How does it work its way through? And now it comes. The fault current cannot re-enter the source again, so it is not possible for the fault current to flow into the source. And so therefore we have no fault current, not at all. So this means now there is no fault current 
though we have an insulation fault inside that device. And the good question is, is it safe or is it not safe? Yes, it is safe. Let's see why. Here we must resort to Ohm's law. Ohm's law says voltage across a conductor is proportional to the current, the fault current in this case, times the resistance of this conductor. And here we see the current is zero, so the voltage drop is zero. And since this protective earth is grounded at one point, it has zero volts, so the zero volts are proliferated to my device that I can hold in my hand. So this is safe. The same, by the way, happens in three phase load. And what is important, the load stays energized. So this means we have an insulation fault. The system is safe in terms that we can touch it and the current is still doing its work. For example, this is used in operational theaters in hospitals. So the last protection is the additional protection in terms of the residual current device RCD. So the RCD protects people against directly touching live parts of an installation that should not happen, but it happens inadvertently, of course. So how does such a residual current device operate? So we switch on our load, the light goes on, for example, in the toaster. And now this device measures the current that goes into my toaster and comes out. Since there is no fault, what goes in must come out and the difference is zero. So the different current is zero. Now let's suppose that one person touches this. So there is an additional current through this body, which is in many cases dangerous and it might kill this person. So we have an additional current in color of violet. And now the difference current is no more zero. There is a different current. And this one trips immediately the circuit breaker, this miniature circuit breaker, and the person is in a safe condition. So you may know these from your home installation, this residual current device, which is an additional protection device, it is single phase, it looks like this. If it is a three phase, for example, in a factory or somewhere else, then it has this appearance. Now, if you check the residual current device monitors the current in the three phases plus the neutral current. So therefore this one has four terminals where you put in the wires L1, L2, L3 and the neutral wire. Of course, you never do it as a private person. You always please refer to experts. So this was today's lecture about the personal safety in the low voltage network. I hope you never need these things, but when you need this, you can be sure you are safe. I wish you a nice day and hope to see you back in one of my next lectures. Thank you very much. Bye bye.